Sergio Busquets has been one of the best defensive midfielders of his generation, completing the legendary midfield trio of Barcelona alongside Xavi and Iniesta. Andrea Pirlo had probably the most impressive range of passing and some amazing free kicks. The question is, why are they so underrated? Probably because they had the misfortune of being overshadowed by bigger names in their teams. However, I think it's time that someone put the spotlight on them, so let's start the video. Sergio Busquets made his appearance in Barcelona's squad in July 2008 and won the La Liga's breakthrough player in 2009. From that moment, he became a regular starter and helped Barcelona win the Continental Treble on two occasions. In the 2008-2009 season and in 2014-2015, he made over 700 total appearances for the club, winning 32 trophies. On July 23, 2023, he left Barcelona after 14 years and his absence made Barcelona struggle. It's not a coincidence that in the year he left the club, they're fourth in the league and were humiliated by Real Madrid in the Super Cup. Vicente del Bosque, the former manager of Spain's national team, praised him on multiple occasions, but some of the most remarkable quotes about Busi are, If I were a player, I would like to be Busquets, and you watch the game, you don't see Busquets. You watch Busquets, you see the whole game. Felipe Luis moved to Atletico Madrid in 2010 and spent four years in Madrid before making a one-year move to Chelsea. Things were not that good in England and he returned to Simeone. That was the moment Atleti started to fight with Real and Barcelona for Spain's supremacy. In his eight seasons spent in Madrid, he helped his team win the La Liga in 2013-14 and reached the UCL final in 2013-14 and 2015-16 seasons. If it wasn't for Sergio Ramos' 93rd minute header, he would have been a UCL winner by now. Diego Simeone built one of the toughest sides to beat in the last decade thanks to his very organized defensive setup, and this wouldn't have been possible without Diego Godin. The Uruguayan joined Atletico from Villarreal in 2010 and the rest is history. Godin on his day was a hard defender to beat for even the best of attackers. A defensive leader, he was the heart of Simeone's perfect defense. Alongside Luis, they lifted Atletico from a mid-table team to one of the best sides in Europe. Their immaculate consistency lasted for many seasons until 2019 when they both left the club. Moving on to an attacking player, once upon a time there was a footballer who could have scored from literally anywhere and his name was Gorgi Haji. The goals he managed to score were absolutely remarkable and he was known as a player that only scored bangers. However, Haji had more than just an impressive shot. He also had dribbling and passing skills to match some of the best in the game. He even managed to win the UEFA Cup and seven league titles while scoring 276 goals in 646 club games and 35 in 124 for Romania. The Maradona of the Carpathians should be a top 30 player on every best player list, but sometimes he doesn't even make the top 100. I don't think Romania will ever be blessed to see someone as good as Haji. Andrea Pirlo is a player that had the misfortune of playing in a period when football fans were only focused on Messi, Ronaldo, Iniesta, and Xavi. He retired in 2017, and as an incredible playmaker, it's time Pirlo was recognized for how good he was. He single-handedly kept Italy on the map during a time when England and Spain were getting all the attention. He was not a goal scorer, so he only managed to score 70 in 19 years, but he was so beautiful to watch. Even on FIFA, you can't pass as well as Pirlo did. He won the 2006 World Cup and two Champions Leagues, so he should be up there with Xavi, Iniesta, and Vieira. David Silva started his career at Valencia, but he started to make a name for himself when he moved to Manchester City. He's been the player that helped City become the monster they are nowadays. Silva has been a part of a golden generation in Spanish football, winning the 2008 Euros, 2010 World Cup, and 2012 Euros. He's the fourth highest scorer ever for Spain thanks to his 35 goals and the second highest assist provider ever for Spain with 28. He's well known for his excellent dribbling skills, outstanding first touch which along with his intelligence allowed him to create space for himself to open up defenses and retain possession in tight spaces. Before we move to the next player, I have a question for you. Who do you think is the most underrated player of all time? Tell me in the comments. Thomas Müller is another midfielder that was never praised enough for his qualities on the field. 
He played for Bayern Munich his entire career and was always surrounded by top-class players like Lewandowski, Thiago, or Lam. He had six seasons with over 25 league contributions, and he never managed to make the top three for Ballon d'Or as his best achievement is fifth in 2014. Between 2010 and 2020, the only players that outscored him were his teammate Lewandowski and Marco Reus. He also set the record for the most assists in a season, as in the 2019-20 season, he tallied 21. There are a lot of people that say he's the most underrated player in world football, and I kind of agree with them. Most people seem to forget how good Ronald Koeman was, so I have to remind them. His strength and intelligence made him an exceptional central defender, but on top of that, he possessed an incredible passing ability and a very powerful shot. He's the highest scoring defender ever with 238 goals in 685 games, and I'm sure that nobody can break this record. Koeman helped the Netherlands win their only Euro in 1988 and led PSV to their only UCL win in the same year. I still don't understand why he didn't win the 1989 Ballon d'Or. Gonzalo Higuain has been one of the most consistent goal scorers of the last decade. He moved from River Plate to Real Madrid in 2007, where he scored 122 goals in 264 games. Then he moved to Napoli, where he had the best season of his career in 2016, when he scored 36 goals in 35 league games. At Juventus, he had two more incredible seasons, but after the move to Milan, he slowed down a bit. After four bad seasons, he moved to Inter Miami, where he got his form back. After scoring 16 goals and assists three in 2022, he said it's the perfect time to hang the boots and retired from football at 34. If I missed anybody, feel free to tell me as I'm sure there are more players that need to be mentioned.